Hello Year 9s and welcome back. Um, this is lesson number two on the tonal portrait and this is our final lesson on this tonal portrait itself. So last week, if you remember correctly, we were looking at the proportions of the face and so we were understanding where the eyes, nose and mouth went. The eyes halfway down, the nose halfway down from the eyes to the bottom of the chin and then the lips a quarter of the way down from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin and that that line there is shown were all symmetrical. We had then used that knowledge by starting to then draw in and sketch in our eyes, our nose and our mouth and we should all now be at this point where we have just a sketching outline of all of the key features within our face. So if you haven't done all so already, it's about then just rubbing out your guidelines that you should have sketched out nice and lightly, so it should be too much issues, just so that you've got a nice um, plain canvas then to work with for when you're now applying the tone. What we're going to apply, do first as well is make sure you've got a nice sharp pencil. Now, preferably a tonal pencil is a pencil that's a 2B, 3B or 4B. If you've only got a HB at home, that's absolutely fine. But if you do have any tonal pencils, then please do use them. And the best ones to use is probably a 2B, 3B or 4B. I'm using a 4B and it just means that it's a softer lead, which means that you'll be able to get more of those lighter to darker tones when we come in to create um, those tones on the face. You also need a rubber to make um, create some highlights and obviously the image that you are drawing from. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start applying some tone to the eyes. Now within your eye itself, if you think about it, even though you can't see it, it was actually an eyeball which is actually the shape of a sphere. So that's a 3D circle. So we know that underneath the eyelid it's going to be that little bit darker so we can then put in that bit of tone coming off and around there. And again, from the edge here, because it's a sphere, it will then be darker to lighter, just coming off and around in these. And then it's about kind of just making sure that everywhere you've got, you're just going darker to lighter. Because remember, tone is darker to lighter. We are not colouring anything in, okay? That's really important. Then we've got our pupil, which here, and I can see that I've got a little bit, if you look very closely, I've got that little bit of white, that's that highlight. And it's important to kind of keep those bits in. So when you're coming to kind of add your tone, you then need to just think about and looking at all those different shades and tones within that and the textures that you're then creating that within your eye. All right, so then it's kind of then putting in this bit, so it's darker to lighter, because that's where that crease is. If you see that crease, so you're then gonna go darker to lighter along there, darker to lighter as well. And then I'm gonna just make it go a little bit upwards. So I haven't got too much of a dark line. And then it's a little bit, and then along here we can see here as well, that's dark a bit here, isn't it? Because it's the shadow, so obviously the light's coming in this direction, which means this side of the face is in shadow, and our eye is actually lower than the bridge of our nose. So we need to show that our nose comes up and that that is a darker shadow here. So we're gonna then just apply that little bit of tone, just coming in and around, okay? So we can then start to just put it, and all I'm doing is I'm just working on these areas, okay? And I'm just starting to apply that bit of tone just around areas that I can see that's happening. Now, once I'm looking at this, I can then start because we've all got eyelashes. Now, eyelashes are confident ticks. I don't want to see any eyelashes where you have got your eye in our funny shaped eye and you've got your eye with no um, tear duct here and you're doing your eyelashes like this okay no one has eyelashes like this at all all right your eyelashes now are with your eyes with your proper shape of your eyes in here and your eyelashes are confident ticks that come out from underneath so you can have your confident ticks and start to build them up so over the underneath here, you kind of have those confident ticks and looking at the image and looking at the direction of the eyelashes, you have them there. And even at the bottom, again, 
just shorter ones, but being confident with it, all right? Then again, with your eyebrows, with the eyebrows is the texture. So we're gonna kind of just put in those lines and the direction of that hair in the eyebrow just to show where it is. And then I can start to bring in that little bit of shading just up and around there. So you can see we've started to apply tone just around the eyes and the texture within the eyebrows. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna move on down here. So with your nose again, I'm just gonna look at my image and look at where it's darker. So again, it's dark all the way down here. So I'm just going to start to very lightly, and you can see that I'm just kind of almost doing cross hatching with my shading, just to start to thinking about where that tone is. So again, in this bit here, it's going to be darker. So I'm just going to make my pencil get a little bit darker around here to lighter. Again, bringing that off lighter down to here. Again, in this side here, it's going to be a little bit darker because we've almost got, even though we drew that bubble, that is still kind of a, we've got that little bubble the, of the top of our nose. So we, we always have that kind of almost that little highlight and you can see it here on hers where the light hits and it, it reflects. Okay, so we can kind of represent that by leaving that bit with no tone on. Okay, and then again in my nostrils, it's going to be darker then a little bit darker underneath here, and again, a little bit darker underneath here, and then we've got the middle of the nose, and um, not middle of the nose, the middle of the mouth is just showing those bits there and coming around, okay? When it comes to the lips, you can see as well with the lips, you have got the texture on it. So again, we've got that tone where it is darker to lighter. So we can first of all apply that. So it goes darker, the top bring it down very dark in the middle here where the lips are apart. And then again here, it's darker on this side and then it comes to be lighter. So where the lips are kind of meeting here, it's gonna be dark because when something's on top of it, you've created that shadow. If you see with my finger, you've got that shadow of it underneath showing that it's on top of one another. And that's what we wanna show with the lips. So again, it's darker to lighter. So just getting in that base kind of tone, darker to lighter, darker to lighter, again in here, and then I can then start to, with my pencil, and if it's sharp, it will be able to do this quite well, is we can start to get those lines of textures in our lips that we've all got, because they're not smooth. And it's about getting those finer details in and really looking at the image that you're working with to be able to then, and it will kind of then bring out all of that fantastic detail of the person that you're kind of drawing. Okay, so you can see here we've started to do our lips and then we can do the same with the top, putting in that bit of texture and around. I've started to have looked at my nose, the bridge of my nose. Again, I would do that to the same on the other and then on the top bit, it would then become very light, almost like a highlight here, if you look here. All right, so I'm not going to do the other side because obviously I've done one and then you can go on to repeat it. And again, then it's just about kind of almost looking and getting a bit more of the tone in around on the face. And then we would afterwards put in some freckles of the person that we're looking at because she's got the freckles. The hair is really important. So if you've got um, someone with longish hair or if you've got someone with hair that's tied up, you need to think about the direction of the hair. So for example, my hair from the root is starting here and it's going down, but they're not all just going down as if I'm drawing my hair. So I've got my head here and it's not all kind of just coming down like this. If you think about hair, it almost flows. So what I would do to start with is I would almost block it into like the direction of how the hair would then flow down around the face, okay? Because if you think about it, hair is like, it's got movement, isn't it, in it? So by this way, you're kind of almost keeping that movement, keeping it and helping you as well by blocking it will then help to make sure that you're, when you add your tone, you're not losing that movement, that texture within that hair itself.
okay? So you can see by blocking it, we can still see that she's got bits of hair that go underneath and it kind of moves and flows around her face. That then helps us when we start to apply the tone and thinking about the texture. So in each block, I'm gonna kind of almost go darker to lighter. And so it's kind of almost like, but it's a bit more of a kind of with your mark making that kind of texture. So you wanna be making sure when you're creating your lines, you're still following the direction of the blocks that you have created. So you can see here that when I'm doing it, I'm gonna do darker to lighter in each of those blocks within it here, all right? So you can have all of those lovely, and it's almost having that nice texture of that hair within your portrait itself, okay? And then again, if you want to, you can then get your rubber in and create those highlights and then work back into it that way. But by working into each of those blocks of hair means that when you start applying it and then you can go back and you can start to add more darker areas, more lighter areas, but you know the direction, and this is really important, it's the direction that you're adding that tone, that texture to, because then that will still keep that movement that you've created with your hair. All right. When you've got your hair here and then you've got all those, she says she's got some like nice little strands, D bits that I'm going to put in there, she will obviously be darker on the tone on the face here because again, your hair creates that shadow on your forehead. So then it will be darker to lighter underneath where the hair is hitting. And that will be the same as here with the eye. So even though I've got that bit there, I'm just gonna create that as being that little bit darker, just to show that I understand that that's created a shadow here to show that that hair is on top of that face, even the eye, and I can make that whole area here darker to lighter. The same with your neck, underneath your chin, this part here will be darker to lighter because your chin is on top of your neck and you've kind of created that shadow. So remember how I spoke about with your finger on top and you can see how you can created that shadow here and it kind of shows that one's on top of another, one's further away, we can say that's darker to lighter. Again, the hair's on top so then that would have that darker area here and then you'd almost have this bit being lighter and then it would go darker to lighter here, all right, because it's kind of that cylinder shape here. So think about the shapes within it. So that is what I'd like you to do for today's lesson. I'd like you to complete your tonal and complete um, your, sorry, your portrait in complete tonal, thinking about where the darker areas, where the lighter areas are, leaving areas for the highlights and that will also help show kind of the texture and the shape of the nose, the lips and the eyes and think about blocking your hair and adding tone to your neck. What I put and what I will put on Teams is that I would like you to do is after you've completed your tonal portrait is to take a photograph and to upload it. I have set this for the week after your um, lesson this week. So you still have a week, say almost homework if it's not finished within this hour's lesson today. If there are any issues, then please photograph it, send it to your teacher and they will give you advice and help. But hopefully with this demo, um, you can then succeed and hopefully present, produce some beautiful tonal portraits that we are very excited to see. Thank you very much, Year 9, and I will see you and speak to you next week.